Hi and welcome to this lesson. Here we're going to talk about how thiazide diuretics lead to hypokalemia. Normal serum potassium for the adult ranges from 3.5 to 5.2. Anything above 5.2 is considered hyperkalemia, while anything below 3.5 is considered hypokalemia. I've included the values for children, infants, and neonates, just so you can get an understanding that they're not the same as adults. I wouldn't worry too much about memorizing them. I don't see questions that require this information on step one or the comprehensive basic science exam. I do see questions on step one and the CBSE regarding values for the adult. Now, hypokalemia can be categorized as mild to moderate when it ranges from 3.0 to 3.4 and severe when it ranges from 2.5 to 3.0. It can present with muscle weakness, ECG abnormalities, kidney abnormalities, and glucose intolerance. For the glucose intolerance, it could be due to decreased insulin secretion or decreased glucose uptake. Let's address the rhabdomyolysis. It's not a symptom, but rather it's a complication. Now, rhabdomyolysis is categorized or characterizes the lysine of muscle cells, which would then lead to hyperkalemia because the muscles are the largest store of intracellular potassium. However, in the context of hypokalemia and exertion, one can see rhabdomyolysis, and that's because potassium plays an important role in vascular tone. And when with reduced serum potassium, there's a reduction in blood flow or, or a vasoconstriction. In the context of exertion and vasoconstriction, that can lead to ischemia of those muscles that are being exerted, which, if severe enough, can lead to rhabdomyolysis, which would then cause hyperkalemia. The ECG abnormalities that one will see are the classic U wave. And I would definitely memorize this because hypokalemia can be diagnosed with the U wave or it can confirmed. Likewise, it's important to know that Hypokalemia is not the only cause of a U-wave. How do thiazide diuretics lead to hypokalemia? It's a multi-step process. And it starts with the inhibition of the sodium chloride co-transporter in the distal convoluted tubule, so which leads to decreased absorption along that nephron segment, and that excess sodium is then delivered to the collecting duct, where some of it is reabsorbed, and with the reabsorption of sodium along the collecting duct, it causes a reflexive secretion of potassium. To fully understand this, we have to understand that the distal convoluted tubule is upstream of the cortical co connecting segment and collecting duct. And so anything that's not reabsorbed here will be delivered to this segment here. Let's use this diagram of the distal convoluted tubule and a cell and its relationship to the collecting duct. And so they're right next to each other along the nephron. So as a reminder, sodium is reabsorbed along the distal convoluted tube by the sodium chloride co-transporter. So in the presence of thiazides, the sodium is re reabsorption is reduced. So that leads to uh, excess sodium delivery to the collecting duct, where that sodium, or a fraction of it, is reabsorbed by the epithelial sodium channel. So for every one sodium that's reabsorbed by, the, by ENAC, one potassium is secreted by ROMK. So what you want to memorize here is a, one, uh, decreased reabsorption along the distal convoluted tubule, excess sodium delivery. Very great. This is one increased sodium delivery to the collecting. That could be a potential answer. Um, increased sodium reabsorption along the collecting duct, increased potassium secretion along the collecting duct. These are all viable answer choices that I've seen on step one in the comprehensive basic science exam. Likewise, uh, you should know that that's due to the ENAC, so that's an answer choice, and then the potassium being secreted is ROMK. I've seen that occasionally. It's not, uh, it's not common, but it has uh, been, I have seen it on a question. So, this is how thiazide diuretics lead to hypokalemia. And hypokalemia, we're going to talk more about that because that then leads to other um, problems, particularly metabolic alkalosis. These are the things you need to know to do well on the exam. So thanks and good luck.